I'm Dr. Michael Hester, Superintendent of Schools. Thank you for coming. Uh, we will be recording our uh, town hall meeting to discuss the bond restructure with no tax increase uh, vote that we're going to have on uh, February the 8th uh, and also early voting the week before. Uh, we're here today to try to answer your questions and to um, uh, make sure that everybody has what they need. We're recording it for those folks who can't be here. We appreciate that you've honored us with your time. This seems like everybody's time and efforts anymore. It's just uh, very precious on what you've got and how to get there. So we appreciate you being here uh, in person. Uh, I want to share, we, we've given you a brochure. And um, what I want to do is talk a little bit through that, just as a base. And then we'll just open up mainly to questions. We have uh, well, with us today is Mr. Randy Paculet who is the district's architect from uh, Little Rock. And we have Mr. Michael Dobbs, our financial folks from First Security in Little Rock. And so uh, they are here to give you any of the technical information uh, that you need or expertise that comes uh, with their position. And of course, um, any of us that can answer any other things from the district, whatever, we'll be glad to do that. On the uh, Again, the vote is February 8th. Early voting is February 1st and 7th. Um, this vote will give the school the authority to restructure our current bonds and take advantage of current lower interest rates. I've heard projections. In fact, I think today the feds are going to come out with an announcement of, on interest rates. But they're saying that interest rates this year will go up anywhere from four to uh, six times this year. And so the board wanted to go with a special election on February 8th because any interest rate that moves past any of the numbers that we've tried to cushion for on that rate will mean we lose tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars to just financing instead of facilities for the space and safety needs that we have for our students. So uh, this vote will not increase your taxes. We have to bring this to a vote to the public because it would be restructuring bonds that were voted on in the past. This is about the easiest answer I've got. Now, Mr. Dobbs may can give you better technical uh, information on it. For those of you who uh, don't understand a lot of the financial things, and I know we've got some folks in here with some real good financial background as well, this is like um, refinancing your home and taking the difference in the uh, your mortgage rate or your uh, equity you've got in your home and remodeling your home. So that's the concept here is to restructure these loans, take that, what we can gain from that, add it to some of our partnership money, and then build the project that we can come up with at this time. Um, why do we need this? Um, the state of Arkansas is deemed Batesville School District's out of space and needs to expand. And uh, for this reason, uh, we were awarded over $5 million in state funds towards a new auditorium and classrooms. If this money does ha this have a time limit on it, if we don't use it, uh, we'll lose it. Uh, restructuring the current bonds will give the district uh, the required match to complete the expansion. And uh, we also received... 3.5 million, and this is new, this has probably never happened before, in what's called ESSER money or COVID money. Our cafeteria, the standards for a cafeteria space, like it's like 12 <coughs> foot per student, 12 square feet per student. And I think we're like uh, four square feet per student. So what happened is, when you're below those standards, in other words, we're out of space. We don't have space for uh, kids to eat. And, and so we had to start our lunch periods real, real early and late to get everybody in. So what happened is, is with social distancing, and then what makes this worse is we're, when we feed kids, we're supposed to keep uh, three to six foot between each kid instead of just side by side packed in. So that's created another hardship. And so what happens is this COVID money, we're eligible for it because this created a cafeteria and kitchen space will create more space for our kids to be able to eat uh, breakfast and lunch. 
And uh, right now, we don't, we cannot feed breakfast to junior high kids because the space, we can't get the high school and junior high in that fast early in the morning. And uh, so this will also allow us, can you serve more meals with the federal government for breakfast and lunch, you also get more money then. So this also allows a revenue stream to that when we're feeding kids, that we get more money to feed our community and take care of them. So this ESSER money is what I call social distance money. It creates more space for us to be able to feed our kids. And then the district um, was, was gonna add two million from our district fund because uh, what we've got drawn up is still short from what we need to do. And uh, we saved uh, some money and we put that towards it. And part of the, sort of the equity we built up from uh, paying off indebtedness and then restructuring here, there's about 14.310 million uh, that we're trying to gain from this move. You throw in the partnership money from the state and the ESSER money and the district money, and that puts us about trying to come over somewhere around 25 million to get to this project. Um, we've, we've shown a picture. This is our best artist picture that we have in the corner. And you see it is a kitchen, cafeteria, auditorium, and then most of that is fine arts classrooms, but it's also like um, our architect here is helping us. And this has been like putting two puzzles together and trying to come up with one picture. We're trying to capture all the money. In our previous project, we had this stuff spread out where it needed to be. Now we're trying to find out, okay, what will they pay for and what can we grab and how can we put it under one roof and get all the money? So while we say foreign arts there, there's a family and consumer science, which is what you used to know as home ec. There's some other classrooms like social studies and stuff like that. We're trying to capture them and put them all under that one roof. Anything that would be partnership money. And so uh, it's been a very complicated uh, thing. And we've had to meet with the state several occasions to make sure that what we were thinking would work out because we will not be able to capture all the money that, uh, that we uh, were allotted because some of it was elementary schools and things like that. And this project will be at the secondary. And the reason we get two for one on our money, when we create more classrooms on the hill with junior high and high school, the high school can move into these or share it with the junior high. And when the high school moves out of what they've got to this, then the junior high could fill the classrooms that we left uh, for them space. So we actually get we create two spaces for one by doing this project on the hill. So as you can see, we're trying to maximize everything we can get. Uh, our last vote went down three to one. The voters said, we don't want a tax increase. We heard that. And so this is the project that we can do without raising uh, your taxes. All right. Um, I'm going to... Do you, gentlemen, do any of you want to say anything or are you ready to just open it up to questions? Uh, I think you pretty well covered uh, what I have to say as far as, you know, restructuring and that sort of stuff, how that how that kind of conceptually works. So I really don't have anything to add. Okay. And, uh, and Mr. Dobbs has official numbers on all the banking and all that. And I, I know uh, Mr. Grant's a CPA guy. And so all, if you need more numbers and deep numbers, he's got that. Randy, is there anything you'd like to say about the project, how we're trying to find the money and what this represents. The only thing I would add is that um, at this point, the school district's proven to the state that they're deficient in the space. So the state has decided to partnership with those spaces. But now that you've proven that, the school district is gonna have to find a way to get those spaces one way or another. Yeah. So if, it, if it's not through this one, you'll, you'll have to come up with a new plan because now that you've proven that you need those spaces, the state's going to require that you give it, it Yes, one yeah. way or another. So yeah. it's, it's, it's more than just losing the money. Um, it's, it's also going to, it's going to have to happen or else the state will take 
like other actions. So. Yeah. yeah there, there's other actions that we, whether or not they're more threatening, uh, they they result in either get it done or they place the superintendent and the school board and, and move in and, and do some things. But uh, we're, we're trying not to go there. We think that by appealing to our community, listening to our voters, that uh, this is a reasonable plan and this starts us on our way to getting what we need done. This does not accomplish what we needed done in uh, our elementaries or uh, half of what we needed done at the junior high. This project probably represents about a third of what we tried to vote on. And so um, this starts with, again, trying to capture all the grant money, the refinance money, the COVID ESSER grant money that's out there right now, and what we can contribute from our savings. Um, while, while we're glad to offer that, one of, the, one of the disadvantages of not having this taken care of in a bond issue is this, the district will spend more money on our capital outlay on our fiscal plan. And that's when you lose money to keep up with salaries. So that's usually when you're a growing district, you spend a lot of money in your facilities and they usually don't have money for their staff and salaries. And you know the pressure we have right now in salaries and shortages of teachers. Now the workforce has either got money and don't want to work or want to work for higher wages. So it puts pressure then on the district that if the community doesn't step up and help us on these kind of issues, our budget to fill the, the facilities, then there's nothing there to keep up with our workforce and the quality of our workforce. So that's the pressures that we have as the business side of the district, what the board has to look at is keeping up with facility needs and with your personnel, keeping up on salaries and quality for the community as well. All right, questions from you. What can we answer for you? Yes, sir. How many classrooms? That's, uh, I know you designated there were, it's not associated with the fine arts and social studies, whatever. How many classrooms is this going to have? Well, we're, we're working on it. When it's all said and done. Randy, you got an idea? I'm, I'm going through my head right now. <laughs> so, well, we're trying to also find, some, we're also doing creative, like, can we use, like, the art room and the home ec room as the same room. That's what he's trying to figure out for us on the grant money. But I think there's at least, there's at least a dozen classrooms in here. And there'll be multi-use. So yeah, somewhere around a dozen uh, learning spaces. Yeah. It was Nathan. It was six hundred fifty thousand on Eagle, and three point five million for West. But because those aren't in this project, what is that? Four one five four point one five. We cannot. Uh, that was added to this five point three. We are not eligible for. And on the I was trying to think on those classrooms. We've got four classrooms. We had. Well, three classrooms are art. One was the home act, which was trying to also make use for the art. And then if any social studies or like lecture type classes could go in there, we had those. We had choir, band, orchestra, drama, and all those guys have classes all day in them. And then the auditorium itself, we could use the stage and we could use the um, mezzanine for classes too, or 
we have, we're heavy in testing now. We have to do testing, and we have to take rooms and bump people out of rooms, especially when we don't have them. Our idea was to go in the auditorium in the mezzanine, take the Chromebooks in there, and have people test so we wouldn't have to kick people out of their classrooms in the day for their testing. And we have, on the junior and high school, I mean, it's a month, two months of testing everybody. And so it's major that we could keep that place filled just as a testing center in just the back of the auditorium. Well, you have the PSAT, you have ACT Aspire, ACT all the time, SAT, ASVAB. We NWEA, yes. we do that, what, three times a year? Yes. So all the testing makes us have to move kids out of their classrooms too. And this would, this could be a testing center how we, it's a lot of multiple use, is what we're saying. Good questions, thank you. And then the most expensive part of this project, and maybe Randy could speak to this, uh, since uh, April of 2020, we postponed the vote. Uh, cost of construction since that time has gone up at least $100 a square foot. Now, a lot of that's been the COVID and all the stuff that we all experienced. But what we're about to hit now is interest rates are going to go up. And what happened is the more those things happen, the less we get for our money for classroom and spaces. Randy, can you speak to um, the cost of this kitchen and that how why this, I don't know if you remember how much it was before or now, but <coughs> talk about, it's amazing how much this costs a commercial kitchen that goes with the cafeteria. Would you speak to that? Yeah, um, that's one of the more expensive spaces, but it's also a valuable space because the, um, the ESSER money is tied to that and then also the state partnership money is tied to that. So the kitchen and dining is where the school gets the most bang for the buck as far as getting other grant money. Uh, but in, in doing budget estimates, we're looking just from a year ago, the numbers we had, we're, we're looking at $100 a square foot more. So um, now we hope some of that will come back down, but it seems that the structure prices, they go up, but they don't ever come back down as far as they were before. So we'll, this, we well, you know, uh, lumber prices are geared up and they drop it. That might come back. Is that, is that kind of what you're basing some of that on? It's, we're it's, we're it's hoping that. We've seen a 300% increase in steel. For example, just from last spring. So, I mean, I can't imagine it staying that high. Yeah. But at the same time, you know, we're in our profession, we're constantly having to switch back and forth. Just to give you that, we had a, a fire station we designed that was a pre injured metal building that we had to change to glue laminated wood because wood, glue laminated turned out to be cheaper than steel, which is just upside down <laughs> from what we're used to. But, um, yeah, so we're. We're working through that and trying to make sure that we'll make sure that whatever we have on paper is within the budget, um, but we don't want to have to keep chipping away at it. We want to get the most we can. Well, and this this cafeteria, kitchen, and auditorium, that's also big steel. Right. Big beans, big steel, mm -hmm. and that's a top dollar right now. It's a, it's a on the <clears throat> gym and new facility, uh, I take it that the gym, we're going to take full advantage of this where uh, this gives us an opportunity to compete for state tournaments, regional tournaments. Well, there is not a gym in this project. Oh, I thought that was going to be part of it. No, no. We had to cut the gym out. The gym, um, the gym was the part kind of that little L there where that yellow line's at, that little L there, that's where the gym was. We had to cut the gym out of this project. The gym component didn't have any uh, state partnerships. So sorry. Yeah. And one of the decisions on that was what, what you said. Yeah, we, we went through and made sure to keep all of all the rooms that are going to get partnership funding from the state so we've got those isolated and, and the gym component just didn't have any money that was any grant money coming from that so it'll be in the future yeah.
That'll be something we'll address in the future. Uh, we do have at least one gym, and we do not have an auditorium at all. So um, the, the one that we had in the old, they called the old junior high here, it was condemned, and um, we can't use it for anything. So uh, we, that's why the state says, well, you got one of those, you don't have that. So they, they also, and the state also has not, as we, I asked them, I said, well, have y'all adjusted any figures where we get more money for COVID and for all the prices? And they have not. So all that is a hit on us. You know, they haven't adjusted what they're giving in grants with what the market's done in the last year and a half. So um, we're making this fit with the budget we have where we don't increase taxes. People ask you, okay, on the fine arts, we have over 600 kids just in, um, well, it's probably high school and junior high that are fine arts. Uh, a lot of people say, well, what, what's in that? We have, we have twice the amount of kids in fine arts than we do in sports uh, because, you know, you take your bands and your choirs and drama and uh, debate and what all those sure? things, there's massive numbers. And then you add a facility like this also becomes, we have nowhere as a district, uh, you know, we've, we've gone to uh, UACCB when we can, but um, a lot of times their calendar and what our calendar is, we can't use it. So this would give us a facility where we could at least have maybe our elementary people meet together uh, or the high school meet, junior high meet. Right now what we've got is the jail. And uh, again, we have to interrupt PE classes or like we just refinished the floor for, I think 30,000 is what it costs us to refinish that floor. When we have assemblies and everybody's walking on it, it just, it can undo it in a year. And then you're spending 30,000 on a year just to refinish the floor from the damage of everybody walking on it and all. So this will give us some of the big assembly, big meeting spaces that we don't have as well. Any other questions? Yes, any other questions? Yes, sir. I guess one of, I mean, I guess a couple of questions. I know one thing concerned about was brought out when we were trying to get the tax, uh, when we were voting on the tax. There's a lot, and I understand it's not in this project, um, but I've not really heard this spoken to. There were some things brought out when we were trying to get the tax and the other campuses and stuff. For example, uh, we were told that West Elementary has wiring from the 1930s. Uh, for one, that seems that it should have been done and taken care of like 30 years ago. Um, but that concern, if we got things like that, um, I know we're not asking for a tax raise in this, but we got money going out for this uh, if we re restructure the bonds and we got all this money going out, uh, this other stuff still needs to be addressed. Um, and then you got, I mean, I guess where does it all end? I know there's a question from other people. Uh, with what I, I work with, my regular job, I speak to a lot of people out and out uh, in the field. And, and the question is, you know, where does this, is it seems like there's, I mean, I'm not against having an auditorium, that's, that's great, but things in the past that should have been dealt with that weren't, um, and we're trying to go on to get an auditorium, well, that's great, but what about all this other stuff? And uh, it, it just doesn't, it seems like there's a, you know, it's kind of like if I, if my house, if I have word that, I got a problem with my house that it could go up in flames uh, tomorrow, and it's and I have an option either I fix this and deal with this before I do anything else, or build a pool in my backyard. Well, the pool's great, but 
would I not fix my house that's about to go up in flames first? And and I know you're, I mean, probably your responses are going to, you know, taxes uh, for that. But we do have this money going out, and if this bond is restructured, we're asking for more money. And just like refinancing a home or getting ec using equity on a home, you're still taking that money that now is paid off. You're putting that back in, so now you got to pay that off again, and then you're dealing with interest rates and stuff. Um, would it not make more sense? And I guess some of the questions that I hear, uh, just talking to people, is not make more sense to pay this stuff off and put the money that we have coming in uh, with into uh, into fixing up the home, so to speak, fixing up the wiring. That I mean, I don't understand why it wasn't done, you know, 30 years ago. Uh, I, you know, I deal with some buildings that kind of stuff, uh, and, and it seems like a lot of times, and I know it's it's not just the tax increase that we voted down but it's the way things were brought about and some of the misinformation uh, that was put out there even to our students and some things that were promised we're going to get if we pass this tax and in the meantime we already start projects uh, before even the tax is passed or not passed uh, there seems to be some projects that already were in the, in the works uh, while we were asking to vote on this to see if we can even do this. And I guess that's what ties up a lot of people, um, you know, on this subject. It's not, not so much we don't want an auditorium or some nicer things. Uh, but I, I guess that those are some of the questions. We've got some facilities that were given off. Uh, now, you know, the building NADC operates now, you know, it was under us. We've sold that off to them. Uh, there's some other things that, you know, that we've had that all of a sudden now we don't have, and uh, why didn't why didn't we put any money into that? Why didn't we do anything with that? And uh, why didn't we give those some of that you know away? I get those are some of the questions that. You know, sure. Know. Very legitimate question. Good question. And you're right. A lot of misinformation was put out there that confused people. And so while. We did need to, uh, we did want to go with new facilities and upgrade there. The wiring and all is safe. The wiring has been kept up to speed. The, the plumb, it's been kept up to speed, but here's the problem. It's just like a, an older home. You chase, it's a money pit and it chases good money after bad. And we're trying to be good stewards with the tax dollars that if we're putting, like we've kept the wiring up, we've kept the plumbing up, but here's the problem. The state normally gives you like, 25% to help offset repairs to things. But once things get so old, they say, you're chasing good money after bad. We're not going to give you that kind of money to do it. So now it's all on the district instead of 25% helping us. It's all on us. And so like right now, uh, if we replace the roof at West, it's going to be at least uh, just the shingle part. It's a half a million. And you still have the issues that we showed everybody, the wooden floor structure, the ventilation issues underneath the building, the efficiency issues on the windows and that type of mortar that they've got, it's just old. And it's costing us more money and inefficiencies and we're chasing good money after bad. We've kept them up. Uh, so that, uh, you know, that when that image gets out there, that's not what funny. They try to talk about, look, we're, trying to do, trying to follow good money, not throwing uh, money away and um, being a money pit because it's such a remodel job. And then when it comes to the efficiency, uh, when I got here, we, we had a strategic plan with the board on, uh, we were strapped for cash. We couldn't give our teachers raises because they were strapped with our footprint. We had, um, we had uh, all these campuses that we'd inherited over the years. And so our footprint was crazy. And then we couldn't get people to even want to like to create a solution to Cushman, to get people to even want their kids to be bust out there and bust back. Uh, we'd lose kids. They'd just go to another district instead of doing that, being on the bus all the time. Uh, the preschool that you mentioned, 
the millions it would have taken to fix it was good money after bad for what the standards we had to have to. And it was in the middle of a draining ditch and we were constantly having flooding through the, through the um, floors through there with rains and everything. And the damage and what it was, it was, we had to get, getting rid of that was awesome for us on our deals. We created money then for our teachers and we went from worst to first in the area for paying our teachers and being able to keep good teachers around kids is how you keep kids in your district. So we're trying to balance efficiency and then we found partnerships people who work with us to create money for us and we have to balance the facilities and teacher pay or staff pay because we also got the issue with classified folks so and then all that it becomes such so many decisions that a lot of misinformation be, can be created uh, in the process but uh, our board and our administration team our buildings We've identified, like we had all the folks there give us a list of things we can do and efficiencies. And that's why we would have the state's largest energy efficiency and the state's first solar project that is now uh, a leader in the state and country. And so we created money, we saved money. Oh, we went through all our LEDs, we went through all of our plumbing, we replaced energy efficient HVACs. We have been doing all kinds of things to find money, reduce our footprint. So, it was to have money to fix things and to get to our staff and to be as efficient as we could with what we had. And yes, I, there is mis misinformation out there. And you do your best to keep trying to tell people what you're trying to deal with. It's like right now, when you have a 1938 facility and we have to look at, you know, there'll be constant maintenance on it. And it's going to be fully on us versus the eligibility of the newer facilities, the, oh, the ones that aren't as old, get a little bit more money. At some point you have to say, when you cut bait and when, when you go there, we are, we were at that point with that facility and that's why we presented the plan. So, does that help? Yes. So, so I guess the question still is, is, I mean, again, so now we're going towards this, this auditorium and these, the you know, on classrooms again. That's great, but if you have, I mean, you still have this other stuff to deal with. You still have elementary to, to deal with. You yes. still got, you know, first through, you know, on a, uh, to even get to this spot. So, right. and we got this money that's going out, paying off these bonds and stuff. Um, again, would it not be, it just seems more reasonable that you pay this stuff, you begin to, to get more out of debt that you can um, address some of these other issues uh, with, without just taking out more. I mean, are we going to be down down this road five years from now, two years from now, a year from now? Oh, uh, we'll, we'll be we'll, we're we'll be on this road again. Oh, with it, we can't go more than two years without addressing these other issues that you're talking about. Uh, oh, right. They are there. They're there. <laughs> just like uh, sulfur rock, uh, we we needed uh, three hundred thousand just in playground equipment because uh, we got tires and um, monkey bars from I don't know how old they are Johnny but there's they're, they're not you can't you can't buy that stuff now because it's not safe it's against all the standards uh, you know you got to make sure there's not snakes in the tires and, and things like that and that's what we're having our kids go with and what we were trying to address is some safety issues and they're trying to raise some money but bless their hearts, I'm telling you, uh, they might as well make that playground equipment out of solid gold because you can't touch playground equipment for less than 200000 just for a set or two. And it looked like it hardly has any kids on it as far as the size of it when you spend just 200000 And they're, they're trying to, I think you raised about thirty, forty, fifty thousand. I've got 55000 55, But that's not even a sixth of what they that need to start with. Well, while that's great, the, the scope and sequence of scale that we're on and what it takes to do on public facilities like what he's referring to your kitchens and your codes that we're under when you put the public in is so expensive that's why you have to have the help uh, on uh, Pastor, bonds. Example, uh, the state requires you to have a fault uh, for the 
you can't just put uh, pea gravel, you can't just put dirt. That alone, to to put that in for, uh, we're funding anywhere from thirty-five, forty, fifty thousand dollars just to put a fault. We tried. We bought. Uh, we had a fundraiser. We had grants. We thought we could put playground equipment out there. Started in our maintenance, which we should have started with them to begin with. To find out, no, can't do that. Can't do that because you can't put that. I ordered equipment from Home Depot. No, can't do that. It has to be. You have to do everything by what the state says. Okay. So you're looking at for a nice playground. You're probably looking at two or three hundred thousand dollars. Three hundred thousand is what we're going to take. Heather, Heather Fulbright is on uh, the Google Me, and she has raised her hand, so I'm going to open the queue for her. Um, Heather, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Let's see her on here. She's trying to get a question in. Yeah. Can she text it or? Yeah, I'll see if she wants to text so it. Mr. Alpha, I think there's parents that have contacted me uh -huh. that are interested in trying to raise money for this arena and maybe get some sponsorships and donations. And I know there's a lot of parents that are out there working toward trying to help the district get some of this money. And, you know, we have some wonderful partners, but the problem is that it overwhelms it. And that's why we brought it to the community, because this is such a large scale of the needs. We have we identified, we, we call it a community engagement process. We started with the teachers and had them tell us what all they needed at each campus. We added all that up to like 85 million. Then we had the community folks come in and say, okay, community, look at this list. Here's what it costs. What do you think the community's willing to fund? And that's how we got down to like 49 million. It's what that was the stretch that they thought we could go. Well, then you know we go to the we go to the public, and obviously we picked a horrible time with COVID to be in the middle of needing to build because everybody, you don't know what the future's going to be. Interest rates, costs going up, so it's just horrible time. But it's where we're at, and so. Um, uh, you know, we all understand why uh, people don't want taxes raised or maybe, you know, the future doesn't look good. Or, you know, we have the, the national average is 7 to 8 percent people over 65 on fixed income. We have 24 percent in our school district. So we are three, three and a half times over the national average of fixed income folks. And in some of our outlying areas or districts we've inherited, it's up to 30%. It's over 65. So we have, you know, we have the challenge that, you know, we've got to consider all those issues. And we also want to stay competitive for businesses coming to town. You know, we, we've got a lot of good manufacturing businesses here. So we're trying to keep our millage as low as we can to be competitive in attracting those in. We understand that, but they also don't want to come to places. If we get so behind, I and mean, what's different for schools now is school choice. Uh, it's like business. It used to be if you lived here, you had to go to our school district. Well, people, they don't have to do that now. That's $7,000 a kid that walks away from you as a business that we don't get. And if, if we don't have the facilities that attracts people it's you you can have choices now and that money walks away from our district and so Megan, we're also competitive for I can hear you. salaries and competitive for facility and it's uh, yes it gets to be a lot to understand and just want to sit down and then we inherited four other districts they just inherited four other districts that we've taken on so that was taking us under. That footprint was taking us under. We were, we were losing on our staff. We couldn't even keep up with, if we were going to fix up things that were really old, the money we were going to throw at it, we still had a, 
um, old facility in a bad place uh, in a ditch um, or way out 20 something miles that nobody wanted to go to. So as far as trying to get busing and getting people to let their kids ride that far. So you just got to make those decisions on efficiencies. And, um, and like right now, Eagle and West are full. And when we tell people we've got maybe 100 seats out of Sulphur Rock to fill, when we tell them we're going to ship their kids out there, that if they go to school here, that's where they got to go, well, they, it might be, again, they got school choice. And we, we would maybe lose money because we're trying to fill every little seat that's left out there, but it's going to mean their kids got to ride buses, or there's a lot of parents, it's a real hardship. They can't go out there with their transportation and all to get out there to all the activities and things. So it's a real hardship on them. So those are all on our plate and uh, what's involved. Are Heather, yeah, Heather, as well as Lance Hall have both uh, prompted wanting to okay. speak. So Heather, you're welcome to speak whenever you're ready. Yes, um, I and I'm just speaking on behalf of a board member, you know, being on the board prior to, you know, Dr. Hester being here and, you know, through everything, through our reducing our footprint and everything that we have done to pr improve efficiencies. But the main thing that I want to ensure that everyone knows is the state is requiring us square footage to house our kids and to educate our kids on the hill at our secondary campus. Our junior high, we do not have enough room available currently for education or, you know, to house them by the state standards. In addition to that, only having one cafeteria for half of our student population of the district, um, the state has also said, you know, we do not have enough room. So with the state puts that requirements on us, we had to go back to the drawing board and look, how can we get that room available the easiest way? And that, I mean, and that is the reason that we chose the performing arts. Not only do we get matching money for adding the classrooms and also adding the cafeteria and all of those things, with adding the performing arts versus other campuses, we also, uh, in addition to that, we get monies for having a performing arts facility since we currently do not have that. And we meet the state standards at the same time. And looking at West Campus, because um, that's a campus that, you know, I know needs a lot of improvements and everything else. We have been situations in the past when we start digging into fixing things, whether it's, you know, be wiring, as someone mentioned, or flooring or those type of things. Under the state's requirements, we have to bring those things up to code. And a lot of times bringing buildings, classrooms, flooring, other things up to code is, you know, double or triple the amount of tearing it down and building new. And so that was the reason for the plan at West Elementary of tearing off that old part. The state will not give us any matching funds. And if we touch anything in that building, in that old part, we have to bring it up to code. And the cost to bring it up to code would be, I don't know the exact amount, but it, it, it is way more costly than tearing it down and building new. So that was the decision for adding the auditorium versus some of these other things that are on our list. Um, over the years, you know, I've seen that we have gained more money and efficiencies than we ever have. Also, we've been able over the last four years to give at least a 3% raise to our teachers across the board, which has not ever been done. 
um, and we continue, you know, to strive to ensure that we are staying competitive in that. So that was just a couple of things I wanted to point out. Thank you, Director Fulbright. Lance Hall, would you like to chime in? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I think Heather touched on it there at the beginning of her response regarding the gentleman's question. I just wanted to um, clarify and maybe add to that question. I think his question is more of, you know, why the board chose to go with the route of the Fine Arts Center versus improvements at West or, you know, as Dr. Hester talked about, campuses that are running out of space. And Heather talked about the logistics of how we're driven by the state and um, and how those decisions are made by the board and and um, and those um, people involved in those decisions. So if Dr. Hesher or someone would talk about the logistics of why they have chosen a fine arts center versus putting that money or um, bond um, money back into uh, versus back into the classroom. So I think that may be what he was he was wanting addressed. That. Thank you, Mr. Hall. Again, on uh, if we would have gone with the plan for West, let's just take that one. Um, you have to do what we talked about, tearing that down to build it, to create, and then to create those classrooms. We we would then have been eligible for three point five million. You're not eligible for, um, you know, like your example, the wiring, and plumbing. What happens is, is when you, when you go, but when we go after that wiring, when we go through a wall that's got old plaster on it, then that wall becomes an issue. Now we got to fix that wall. It's not just the wiring. It becomes two or three other things, or you lift the floor up to, to do something here. And then a truss <laughs> gives way underneath. And so it's just one thing goes to another on those older buildings. That's where we're at. And so there literally was not money. Now that 3.5 was not there unless we created, tore that down and created the need for that many classrooms to come back again. So the, that kind of maintenance there would just have to be out of our regular operating budget that uh, you're referring to. And we do, they, they keep that stuff up. It's clean, it's nice. But you know, again, uh, the floors, I mean the ventilator, that was built in the day where they didn't have air conditioning. The floors have about a three or four foot clearance they used to have windows where you open up the top so that you could let the hot air out and the cool air coming under, underneath the floor and up. And of course, you know, uh, that now that we had to seal all that up, do air and all that. And so it's just a matter of it's chasing good money after bad. It didn't fit the formulas the state gave us to have to create that money. And um, so this plan we got maximizes uh, the most grant and the biggest way we could do it without increasing taxes. So, I guess the next question would be, so within two years, so what are we looking at to address, uh, address those issues? Are we coming up against another tax increase this year? I mean, uh, well, we, we spent- know, that, that stuff is still there. The kids are still uh -huh. going there. They're all gonna be going, even if this is built in the next couple of years, they're all, you know, First grade's not going to be attending this, if right. I understand this correctly. They're not all going to be coming here. So, I mean, you still have, that's still sitting there. Right. Well, we didn't wait. Uh, we have modulars that we had to move in this year. We couldn't wait, couldn't afford to wait, couldn't afford to wait, see if we passed or failed on the bond issue. So we moved modulars in to the elementaries and to the junior high. That cost us about half a million. And again, that's a half a million out of the operating funds that, we had to do just a classroom space that's not there for either repairs or for salaries. So we had to address uh, the classroom issues by bringing in modulars. And that's kind of what, that was the solution this year to try to get to it. As we go, um, I'm gonna play a, a latch, is that you on, uh, you, your microphone's on. I don't know if you're trying to get in or not. Somebody's microphone's on. Okay, well, I think it's my wife. <laughs> Peggy, 
<laughs> I didn't say hey, Dad. <laughs> I just it. Well, I saw it when you hear it. So. Uh, how am I doing, hon? <laughs> okay. Uh, what was I saying now? Okay. The 500000 is what we spent this year just on classroom space. And, again, those issues of classroom space and safety are not going away. We will have to come back to it. And then here's the good, so here's the good news. We're growing. I mean, we're busting at the seams. That's great news. Batesville's growing. We got jobs. We got people moving in. You can't find a place to rent or to buy anymore. The town is exploding, and we're exploding. So it's a good problem to have, but we, 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 had, we wanted to try to take a bigger approach and get it all done maybe at once for a while, but we're going to take it in bite sizes. And so we'll address this issue, and then we'll come back. We'll see what the priorities are after that. So are we losing, so for the modulars, the classroom space, is that because state regulation or whatever with the COVID stuff, social distancing, is that? That's because we didn't have enough classrooms for kids. So, and that just, we've had such a, I mean, I know there's a lot of people now that are homeschooling, that weren't homeschooling, uh -huh. you know, versus two years ago. Uh, I mean, I don't know what the numbers are on, on the attendance and that kind of stuff. Uh, we got about 150 that are that are virtual in K through 12. We got about 150 that are virtual. Out of 3,500. Yeah. So we still have very, we're very. Positive. Yeah, and we are right now. I mean, we're I, yesterday. I looked up. We're still we're enrolling people. It used to be, you know, the beginning of the school year and maybe get semester you'd have we're enrolling people almost daily it's amazing uh, what's going on but we've got jobs and it's and people like living in Batesville the quality of living we've got the kind of lifestyle we can provide for families they love that and it's great uh, but we're experiencing that too and so on top of our needs of you know updating we we've, we've got growth and that's a very healthy thing uh, but we're, you know, we're trying to represent our needs to the community, and we're trying to weigh what the community and the voters want to do too. Heather, do you have a comment? Yes, um, and I was just going to say the state requires us to have so much square footage per child, so they go based off of our total student count. Um, and it's very easy to put a classroom of, you know, 20 students at an elementary campus in a modular versus on the hill. We are so far behind on square footage versus student count that that is why we are needing to add so much in that area versus on the elementary campuses. Um, and just the fact that, I mean, the cafeteria is probably, um, my biggest concern. Um, and I mean, I, I don't know how many people realize this, especially if you have elementary students currently and you haven't been on the Hill or haven't moved to, you know, the junior high or high school, um, Currently, we have kids who, you know, are in sixth and seventh grade and, you know, they're eating at like 10, 15 in the morning when they get there. Um, and that's just due to the amount of kids to run through that square footage is almost impossible. Um, we've also had to open up our campus for qualified students in our high school for our junior class, typically open campus for lunch periods has been, you know, our seniors. We've had to bring that down to our junior class this year. Um, also, Dr. Hester has pointed out many times that having an open campus for those age kids, you know, it, you know, is a safety you know, there's there's a huge risk that we're taking with the safety of our kids because we are responsible for them, you know, while they're on our campus. Um, so we, we really don't like that open campus situation because it allows them to get in vehicles and drive around for 30, 45 minutes and, you know, before they come back. But we're having to do that because of the cafeteria situation and we can't get all the kids fed. 
Um, and some of those kids, you know, that might be their only good meal for the day. Some of those kids who are eating that early, you know, if they go into extracurricular activities right after school, you know, they're going from 1030 until, you know, six, seven o'clock at night before they get something to eat again. So um, to me, that that's a big concern. And the reason we did put the modulars on the elementary campuses, because it is very easy to move an elementary class because they stay in one room. They don't have to travel between classrooms or anything. And you can fill up that modular with an entire classroom. I, I don't know if that answers your question. So it, it wasn't necessarily because of COVID and you know, social distancing. I mean, yes, of course, that's always a plus during our current environment. But the biggest thing is, is the state requires so much square footage per student over all of our campuses. Thank you, Director Colbert. And and to her point, that okay, so we get so much money for kids because the the feeding program is a federal program. So because it takes two and a half to three hours to run just lunch through, we can't feed breakfast to everybody. So that means we are missing out on tens of thousands of dollars, if not a hundred thousand on federal money to feed our kids breakfast because we can't even get them. We can't do two meals in a day into a facility like most people can do. So we're losing all kinds of federal dollars to our uh, food program and to our food insecurities for the community because the space is so limiting. But that's also why there's 3.5 from ESSER to get that done just on the cafeteria. We got a couple minutes. Wow, I thought we'd just be 15. <laughs> so uh, you guys are good. Anybody else online want to say anything? Okay, well, we're around if you want to talk some private conversations, something maybe you didn't want to bring up here, but uh, we'll be glad with our finance folks or architects or anybody that's here, school people, to answer questions. Thank you for your time. Uh, we really appreciate that and your support.